Hey kids, it's Pastor Austin with this week's Big Truth. So we're in our series of the fall. And as we talked about last week, is that God created the world perfect, right? Everything was good, everything was perfect, then sin happened. And we looked at Genesis chapter 3 when sin entered into the world. And from there forward, all of God's creation is now broken. And so that's what we're talking about in our series this week, is that we are broken and, and how God's creation is broken because of sin. So we've got another big truth, our second big truth in the series this week. Are you ready? Our big truth this week is that we sin against God. We sin against God. One of the greatest passages in the Bible that talks about this is Psalm 51.4. And that's our Bible verse for this week. Psalm 51.4 says this, Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. So remember, these are the words of David, and this is a psalm of repentance. And we're going to talk about that in a second, too. But listen again and see if you can hear where our big truth comes from this week. Psalm 51.4, against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. So what does this verse teach us? If you guys heard our big truth, is that we sin against God. That when we sin, sometimes we think about that that's an offense towards other people, and that's true, but it's more important to understand that sin is against God. And so, in fact, I've got two different object lessons for you today to talk about our, our big ideas that we're going to mention in just a second. So the first one is that if you guys have been in the kids' department for a while, probably you have a pair of these of your own, or maybe even two or three pairs. Um, but these are kind of like a makeshift, a homemade uh, binocular. So you can kind of pretend like you're looking through binoculars. So if you have those at home, or if you have some binoculars at home, you can do this activity after the video is over. But what we usually do in our class is we look and we spy out things that we want. Right? We look at things and we kind of go, I want that, and oh, I like that phone, or I like that tablet, I like that pair of shoes. So that's what we all do, right? We all spy out and look out at things that we want, and we want them for ourselves. Well, that's called pride, right? And pride is a sin. And also, um, I don't know if you guys like to play games in your family at home, um, if you have like a family game night or things like that. But I want to see a raise of hands. How many of you in your family, you're that guy in your family, who likes to kind of maybe break the rules just a little bit? In other words, if you've got a card game um, that maybe you're playing at home, um, you're going to be that kid or that person in your family to try to kind of sneak an extra card in or maybe kind of sneak a peek at somebody else's cards. Um, so any other games that you play, you can kind of bend or break the rules if you want. Well, that's going against the official rules, right? And that's rebelling against the rules. So that leads into our three big ideas for this week. So sin, first of all, big idea number one is sin is pride. Sin is pride. When we say, I want this, or I should have this, or this is me, um, that's called pride, and that's a sin. Second big idea is that sin is rebellion. It's going against, it's rebelling against God. Now, it's a very strong word. So we have to understand sin is very, very, very dark and deep. And it is very serious because it's a rebellion against God. So our last big idea makes it personal. Again, I am prideful and I am rebellious. You can even say that at home. I am prideful, I am rebellious. And so we understand that we sin against God. That's our big truth. For this week. So our Bible passage connects to our Bible verse in a different way. So our Bible passage is found in 2 Samuel chapter 12, and it's talking about David. And guess what? Remember David, the same guy that, that slayed Goliath, the same guy that was the king and ruler of Israel that everyone loved? Guess what? He was sinful. 
and he was rebellious. And he sinned against God. And so in that passage, chapter, uh, chapter 12 of 2 Samuel, we're going to take a look and see how, uh, how David sinned and then how he was called out in his sin. And then that connects to our Bible verse in Psalm 51. And we see that David had a repentant heart, that he understood he is rebellious and he is prideful and he is a sinner. So take a look at 2 Samuel chapter 12 as our Bible passage this week. May it illustrate and help be an example of our big truth that we sin against God. Hey, hope you guys have a great week. Right now I'm going to send it to Mr. Brandon with our home hook. Hey guys, Mr. Brandon here with this week's home hook. All right, this week we're going to jump into our big truth of we sin against God. And when we sin, we rebel against God. What does that mean? Is we do things that God tells us not to do. In, in the Bible, in God's Word to us, He gives us a, a lot of instructions on things that we do, that we should and that we shouldn't do. And when we, when we do the things that we shouldn't do, we rebel against God. I think we all, we all do those things. When, as, you know, as kids, when we disrespect our parents or we do things they tell us not to do, that is an example of rebellion. So this week, for your family challenge, I want you guys to get a jar and a bag of cotton balls. And throughout this entire week, mom and dad join in too. When you do something that is disobedient or that is against what God tells us to do or against what, you know, kids is what your parents tell you to do, put a cotton ball in a jar. Let's see where you're at at the end of the week. I know for me, if it was me doing it, it would probably be pretty full. And that is a good way to talk to your kids about rebellion and sin and how it's evident in all of our lives. Hope you guys have a great week. And up next is Miss Kim with our Go Challenge. Hello, boys and girls. Miss Kim with the Go Challenge. Okay, today we're going to be talking about why do we plant seeds? Well, the answer is we plant seeds so we can have a harvest, right? So we plant um, corn and we get corn. And we plant tomatoes, we get tomatoes. Well, today we're going to talk about planting churches. And, you know, we know we don't physically plant a church, but we do plant church so, churches so that others can hear the gospel. Now, um, so today is the second Go Pursuit. We talked first about sending disciples. Now we're going to talk about planting churches. In the book of Acts, we learn that the early church started with people teaching God's word. They were serving one another in love and worship. And they were also remembering that Jesus, what Jesus' work was on the cross when he died for them. And they were praying. So that's what planting churches is all about. Here at Tri-Cities Baptist Church, um, we believe it is our desire to plant churches and to send others. We provide them with the resources and teaching and learning and help to set up churches and partner with other people in other parts of the United States and other countries so that everyone would have a place to go and learn and worship Jesus. So together we are going to prioritize that we're going to Look for places that don't have churches and plant a church there. And we are also going to pray and give generously to the church. All right, boys and girls, it's time to end in prayer now. God, you are good. You make yourself known to all of us, yet we reject you and choose to follow ourselves. God, please forgive us. Instead, help us to live generously and to send and plant churches, to share the gospel and start churches in places where there are no churches. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Goodbye.